Hello everyone and welcome to Off the Wall. Today is the 10th day of 25 days of Christmas and I got a very special guest with me. John, how you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? It's so good to see you again. It's doing well, doing well. Today we're going to be discussing your favorite Christmas movie. So what is your favorite Christmas movie? Tell us a little about it and why it's your favorite. Absolutely. Well, this was tough. I, I know I sent you a couple different options where I was like, I love all these movies, but I, I did go with what is perhaps not only the best Christmas movie, but also maybe the best John Hughes movie. I don't know how we feel about that. If that's too hot of a take and it's too cold of a season for it, uh, <laughs> but I went with home alone. Uh, I love home alone, especially Macaulay Culkin, recent Hollywood walk of fame star earner. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a, it's such a wonderful classic. Uh, it's, it's goofy and it's, it's earnest in a way that a mm -hmm. lot of movies are not these days. Uh, and I love that fact where it feels like they put a lot of effort into the way that they staged everything. I mm -hmm. love the way that it's written where they don't, they don't pull any punches. And I don't mean that from like a, Oh, the, the PC, it's like, you know, what everybody does. <laughs> I mean, just more like, yeah, they just have a whole family be like, shut up to an eight year old. That's crazy. <laughs> They really, they really go to town on Macaulay Culkin. He earned, yeah. he earned that star on the Walk of Fame. Uh, but yeah, I, I love it because even for as mean as a lot of the movie is to its characters, there's no mistaking it for being like a very heartfelt movie about yeah. a family. I mean, specifically a, a mom and a son that love each other very much, even when they argue, even when they may or may not accidentally leave their kids home alone when they go to france and even if they accidentally leave their kids at the whims of two crazed ruffians going yeah. about the town uh but yeah i i love that movie i love yeah. home alone i think the mom loves him we're questionable about the rest of the family <laughs> We are quite, I think ultimately the dad, I mean, that's also, again, those like classic, like eighties, nineties families dynamics where the dad yeah. is just kind of the like, ah, put, put him there sport. Like right. That was just kind of how dads knew how to express love back then. <laughs> and one thing watching, rewatching this movie is the fact that the entire family could afford a trip to Paris. I'm like, ah, oh, the nineties, man. Oh, there's no question as to why the wet bandits targeted them. Like, 100%. Yeah. We are talking about the suburbs of Chicago. These are upper-class yeah. folks. And I know they try to have at least, like, one scene where the dad is like, yeah, you know, I remember when we weren't rich, as opposed to now, where I really pr pulled myself up by my bootstraps. Right. I'm like, all right, okay, you know. But it's it's just so fun to then see the uncle, who is, like, you know, the, the, the big jerk of all mm -hmm. jerks in the family, just being like, all right, come on, we have to take the glassware. <laughs> Stuff it in your purse, <laughs> hurry. Exactly. But going into this film, he does get left alone. He wakes up, family's completely gone. So if you were a kid and you woke up and your family, your parents were gone, what's the first thing you would do? Oh, see, I I really, I really don't know. Cause I had to think about like the different eras, right? Mm -hmm. All the different times. Cause if I was like as young as Macaulay Culkin, I would probably be freaking out a little bit. Yeah. I would probably be like trying to call up on the old, on the old landline phone, trying to reach yeah. out to people being like, Oh, what do, what do we think you guys? I'd probably be trying to figure it out. Then of course I'd get to the point where I'm just going right in on the ice cream. hundred percent. We're going right in on the ice cream. Would you uh, leave it out and let it melt like him? No, only because I think I wouldn't stop eating until it became soup. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> but then I was also like, for some reason, when I first went to that question, my first thought was when I was at the most like fraught with my family relationship, which is when I was, of course, like many people, 13 or 14 years old. In which case, then I'm just kicking my feet up. I'm just immediately hopping into the, the, the TV room, we called it. <laughs> Yep. And that's where I'm like rolling up with my just super unhealthy, like two packs of ramen at once. I'm eating it and I'm nice. just sitting down. I'm nice. rewatching the X-Men movies. <laughs> I'm just like, that'll show you, you idiots. I wished you out of existence. <laughs> and how long, like, how long would it take you until you were like, oh man, I want them back. Oh boy. I mean, again, little kid immediately. 
Little kid, immediately I'm scared. I want my mom and my dad. But as a teenager, honestly, I could probably make it a couple days. I think I could have made it a little while before I was like, all right. Because I think I also would have just been like calling up my friends. Which again, right. that, that's very much the thing of our age where it's like, yeah, at that point, I would have just called up my friend Jack and been like, hey, can I come over? Slash, can you come pick me up? Go to someone else's mom. Exactly. That's the thing. I, I remember reading some of the reviews of this where people were like, how come he just didn't call the, how come he didn't just call the police? It's like, well, they uh, set up at the top that the phone lines are down. But if yeah. I was me, then hypothetically, there's not that much snow or wind in Philly anymore these days around Christmas time, unfortunately. So yeah, I probably would have had no problem just calling up somebody to be like, hey, come over. Hey, come over. Let's figure out what all the things in my dad's liquor cabinet are. <laughs> right? And there's would be absolutely zero snow here in Miami. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like, yeah, between Miami, Philadelphia, December, and then Los Angeles now, it's like we are not talking about even a quarter as much snow. Exactly. Going in, the best part about this movie is the pranks that are being done to both uh, Harry and Marv, the way that's right, and, and pranks is frankly even putting it lightly. Nice, it's like some yeah. of them are like against the Geneva Convention war, crimes. Yeah. but these pranks, quote unquote, pranks, which was your favorite, and who do you think got it worse, Harry or Marv? Man, oh man, this was this was this was a tough one to have to think about. Uh, I think probably my favorite would have just been the ice that makes them both slip on the stairs because that is when I, I, I just clocked how just so good Joe Pesci is at noises. Right. I think it's like right when he's slipping where he just starts going, he's like, ah, rash of France. like just doing like pure cartoon shit where I was like, oh, that's incredible. This is a master at work. This is a master at play. And so that, that was my favorite just because of just hearing Joe Pesci get to go off. That was really yeah. all I needed from this movie. <laughs> And then as far as who I think had it worse, this was tough. Because at, at first, we were talking before that it might be Marv. Because he gets the, like, nail through the foot, right? Yeah. He gets the, like, iron dropped on his head. He's got yeah. a concussion. Uh, he, he, he went through a lot. But I think, I think Harry had it worse just because of the sheer psychological warfare. Like, first of all, he's, he's been branded. He's, yeah. been, he's, got, he's got the McAllister M. He is, mm -hmm. he is another family's, like mark on him that's yeah. right off the bat b he lost his gold tooth and that mm -hmm. was his whole thing he loved showing that thing off and then c like i was saying with just like the glue and the feathers that wasn't anything that was just sheer humiliation right that is just trying to break a man down fundamentally and it worked so i th i would have to say i think he gets it the worst just because he is he is truly the worst off yeah and i think you see that even so in the next movie, even though we're not talking about it. I haven't seen the second movie. <gasps> wow. I know. It's I, I you know, and I think I think it's just because I can't I can't watch a movie where of a city where I lived. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I live in New York. I'm like, yeah, no, I can't watch that because I can't relate. Because I'd watch the movie <laughs> and I'd be like, no, there's a great pizza place right over there. <laughs> That's why I can exclusively watch movies about <laughs> About the Midwest, because it's like, no, I know the East Coast and I know the West Coast. Those those I understand too well. I don't need to see a movie lie to me about what living there is like. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that happens when there's a movie ever sent in Nashville or a movie set here in Florida where I go, there's just around the corner. You could do this. You could yeah. do that. Oh, that's not set here. That's exactly. not what Miami looks like. And that show was actually filmed in Puerto Rico. And I'll go, oh, that's why. That's not Miami. <laughs> I watch an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I'm like, I don't understand why they're doing this instead of just going to Chubby's. I don't, right? I don't Yeah, I understand there's a dead kid, but you can go to Chubby's. And if the line is too long, you can go to Del Sandro's, though it'll probably be the reverse way around. Right. <laughs> I can go get a cheesesteak and a yingling. <laughs> yingling is one of my favorite beers and one of my friend's favorite beers from college yeah and they don't sell it in kentucky so we would <laughs> always have to go to tennessee or one of the bordering states to go get a yingling i and again full new york hipster mode i was drinking those pbrs i was oh, rolling gross. up to parties with a 40 of pbr and there was definitely at least one point in time at my most degenerate where this was not beer but i would go to the the grocery store 
and I'd get those like little like personal sized minute made orange juices <laughs> and I'd go home, pour half of them out and then have one of my 21 year old friends buy me a handle of vodka and then top it off and just bring two of those holstered in my pockets like they were gunslinging <laughs> Wild West days. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, it's time for a party. Watch out. And as the cars go by. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember that time? You guys think we'll be time? 20 forever? <laughs> <laughs> you guys think we're going to be best friends forever? And then I talked to only a third of the kids I knew in college. Right. Exactly. Going more into it. The pranks, as we're calling them are some of my favorite scenes, but there's some more good scenes in this movie. Well, what was, hold on, what was your favorite prank? We forgot to uh, mention that as well. Mine, and it's probably because I have to look away every time, is the nail through the foot. Yeah, yeah, that's a real visceral one. Yeah, that's one where if you do watch it, you're like, because <laughs> yeah. you, you feel it. And anytime there's a movie where someone has an, steps on a nail, it just it hurts. It hurts me. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm trying to think of like what were top top five nail in person movies. <laughs> top five fun. Hey guys, welcome to Screen Rant. This is our list of top ten times people got absolutely nailed on a movie. What's the name of that uh, Krasinski movie where they have to stay silent? Oh, a quiet uh, place. A quiet place. Oh yeah. She steps on a nail in that and has oh. to stay quiet. I forgot about that entirely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, isn't that, it ain't that always the way where you're trying right. to be a little bit quiet and there's always somebody left a bunch of ding dang nails yeah. all over the ground. And you see, saw the size of that nail too in the movie. Oh, that, earthy. that looked like it would go through the entire foot. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't. I'm right? surprised, frankly, and again, I'm surprised Marv got away as well as he did because I don't think yeah. that nail stuck in his foot. He got, he was able to put his shoes back on. Yeah. And how could he walk? I feel like I wouldn't be able to walk on my foot if I stepped on a nail. Oh, yeah. I, I would be out. Out like a light. Yeah. Too many people in this world have lamented about the idea of just stepping on a Lego. Right? Like, no, no, no. You, you, if there were nails all out and about like that in real life, <laughs> and now I'm just doing the John Mulaney bit of like, I really thought quicksand would be a bigger problem. <laughs> and not only does he get the nail, he also gets... Steps on the plastic and uh, glass bulbs. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, afterwards. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. A lot of stepping on, oh, not to mention the micro machines. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, <laughs> just some great world building. They they dropped that gem in right up top where it's like, hey, there you go. And now you know one of the things he'll use on mm -hmm. men. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can learn a lot of ways to torture someone by watching this movie. That's true. <laughs> or just watching TikTok. True. true. <laughs> what a fun world we live in, huh? But outside of the pranks, what are some of your favorite scenes, some of your favorite lines in this movie? Oh, man. I think one thing that especially stuck out to me this go around was just uh, when when John Candy first meets the mom, yeah. uh, the Polka King, and he's really trying to be like, yeah, so these were some of our hits. It just, no, none of them. All right. No, I figured you might know some of them. Oh, you like, don't he, know me? Yeah. he Because he's like so like nonchalant about it where mm -hmm. you can like tell he's like, oh, you don't know me? Oh, that's so weird. Like he's not sad about it. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of like, oh no, that is bizarre that you don't know who I am. Oh, whatever. Right. <laughs> hey, what's up? You want to ride with me across the country? I love that. I remember the, the first time I rewatched this movie as like an adult, I was like, it's so nice that like the one character in this movie that's not a sociopath is the man who loves polka music. Right. That's a, hu that's a huge W for that genre. <laughs> I mean, it's then, you know, followed up by the fact that they're then in the car and he's like, Oh, yeah, here's why every one of my bandmates is the worst dad in the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, John Candy, man, what a what an absolute legend mm. that man was. Uh, yeah. He was great. Um, yeah, and then I also, again, kind of like just talking about some of the more heartwarming scenes. Uh, I also really like the, the scene of the mom kind of like saying her goodbyes to the family as she's like trying to frantically be on the payphone. Right. Coordinate with anybody and everybody. Just having having to deal with French people. Oh my God, that the poor worst. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Catherine O'Hara, right? Is that who it was? Am I right? Am I crazy? Uh, 
Let's it's gotta check. be right. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. I was like, there's a moment there in my mind where I was like, I can't believe I've forgotten. <laughs> I was just like, I think you're correct, actress. but I don't want to say yes until I double check myself now. <laughs> very, very. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh God. Her, her and Eugene Levy, a, a un, mm -hmm. un, un, unparalleled comedy duo. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I loved that. Um, God, what was another good one? Um, honestly, I really like the the intro scene where it's like, where it, it almost feels Shakespearean when like Joe Pesci pretending to be the cop and then the pizza yeah. guy are just both like kind of witnessing everything. Where it was like, that's some beautiful <laughs> way to get off some exposition of just like yeah. two characters that are, I mean, one character that is going to be directly involved, but you don't know it yet. And then one character that is just there to get shit on. One character yeah. that is really there to be like, oh, come on. I need some money for the pizza, dude. And then <laughs> that gets called back later. Oh, oh, and the runner of knocking the statue over. Oh, the runner of not perfect. Again, just classic comedy rule of threes. Yeah. They knock that shit over once with the pizza guy. <laughs> then they knock it over again with the airport buses. I was like, oh, that's just a that's just good. That's just classic. That's just and these those... running through the golden hits. And those 90s pizza prices, $12 for a pie? Like, come on. <laughs> I think I think if I spent $12, there's a place by me where I could get a nine-inch personal, no kind of anything on it, just Jimmy's right. pizza. But other than that, I don't know. I think that, what a, what a bygone era. Right. I think even the dollar slices in New York are $1.50 now. Oh, wow. See, that'll break my heart if I watch. That's why I can't watch Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. <laughs> Is because I'm gonna get to a scene where he goes up to a pizza spot and they'll be like, Oh yeah, you want a dollar slice? That'll be 50 cents, and I'll just start weeping. Where I'll be like, <laughs> this is what we've lost. <laughs> hey, Costco still has the dollar fifty hot dog and drink, and they haven't raised it since. Hey, you know, sometimes a company has to stick to its values. Yes. <laughs> and I don't look up what uh, uh, Costco's other values are because I'm right. sure something bad. There's gotta be, but at least they've got that for us. Right. Some of my favorite lines, it's short in the beginning when it goes, Mom, does Santa have to go through customs? Yep. I cracked up at that. Uh, when he opens his brother's chest and there's the Playboy magazines and he's looking through it and he goes, no clothes on anyone. Disgusting. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's again, both of those are kind of similar as well when he's uh, going to the store. And he's mm -hmm. like, hi, is this toothbrush approved by the American Dental Association? Right. And my favorite scene is probably the heartfelt scene with him and the elderly man in the church. Yeah. And it shows that no matter what age you are, you can give good advice. Because Macaulay Culkin gives some really good advice at a very young age to this elderly man. Yeah. So just... Don't be afraid of calling your son what's the worst that's going to happen. What's the best that's going to happen? He's going to be back in your life. And I thought that was so heartfelt. And they both were giving each other advice. And it was just very sweet. Yeah. It's, it is kind of funny to think about, like, how much Macaulay Culkin's character was just written as, like, an adult. Because there is a lot of Kevin where it's like, there's definitely times where he's just kind of being just like a snippy, like almost like Chandler Bing esque character. Right. <laughs> where he's just kind of like going off of Like the, I mean, the first scene, he is kind of being a tool. Like it is worth mm -hmm. saying, like obviously it's, he didn't deserve to get left home alone, but he was being a bit of a tool if we're just, mm -hmm. if we're just telling it like it is. Uh, but he wanted yeah. that cheese pizza. I mean, Liz, I get it, dude. And like, yeah, you should, you, you're allowed to push your brother. But like I don't understand why you're why you're trying to do bits with your dad right now. He's <laughs> like, yeah, clean up your shit, dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so my last question for you is going to be: Why should people put this in their yearly Christmas rotation? You know, I think I think there's something cathartic to the idea of watching a movie where it's like this family sucks, but it's also mm -hmm. family, and at the end of the day even when you have to go through some absolute horse shit, it's always nice to know that a your family at the end of the day is going to love you and be nice to you. And you're going to figure it out. And the ones that aren't, they're going to get left in France. Uncle does not come back <laughs> at the end of the movie. Uncle is not there for the big ending. That's because he's eating shrimp and hopefully getting food poisoning, crapping his guts out. <laughs> 
and whatever the French call a toilet. And now you don't have to think about them until next year. And that's also a beautiful thing. <laughs> that is a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, thank you, John, for being on here with me. Of course. And, Are we done already? He... Oh, no. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Oh, man. I just have to think about all the other things I love in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the, I okay the moment where John Candy's like, hey, do you just want to real quick play this clarinet? <laughs> do you? I mean, because you are you actually play the clarinet, right? Do you yes, feel I like do. if you? I mean, obviously a lot of different things would have to happen for you to be just sitting in a U-Haul. But do yeah. you feel like if somebody was just like, hey, you want to play something real quick that you could just bang out a solo? If it was John Candy offering me to play clarinet, I'd probably play the clarinet, but. I don't know. It'd be like, where's that mouthpiece been? That's true. That's fair. I mean, you got to imagine the Polka King probably, he's probably got the thing of like the like fold out briefcase where he's just like, ah, do you have a pick that you prefer? <laughs> right. What read size do you play? Absolutely. Oh, there's the other question. Do, I mean, cause I don't know. Cause you've seen home alone too, lost in New York. Yes, I have. So I want to know how did, how do the wet bandits get out of it? Well, how, what what kind of plea deal do they take? Because, I mean, we know that they're snitches. Because we know mm -hmm. when, like, uh, Kevin tricks them with the angel Angels with Dirty Souls, I think is the name of the fake movie. Yeah. In the movie where, like, <laughs> Joe Pesci's character is just like, well, no, 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 hold on. Let's see if we can see who these guys are. So that way we can hypothetically. <laughs> so I, I want to know, like, is that how they get out? Do we know? Do they take a plea? I forget exactly how they get out, but they do get out at the beginning of the next movie and it's the next Christmas. And that shows where Loki, these parents are kind of the villains because they leave him again. Oh yeah. No excusing that. No excusing that <laughs> the very next year. Like that, yeah. that, that, that is, they should egg on their face, but also egg on the face of the American judicial system. Yeah, absolutely. I, this was my very letterboxed joke when I watched the movie is like, Oh, uh, do you think maybe Marv would, or Harry was able to get out because he just hit up his cousin Vinny? <laughs> That's another movie. He's in. <laughs> I still need to watch that movie. I tried renting it, and then, but I rented like a DVD copy, and it just like kept skipping out. Once he got to, <laughs> all I know about that movie is that he's there to help out Ralph Macchio, mm -hmm. and then he goes to a bar. And then that's where my copy cut out. That's as much oh, as no. I know. <laughs> John, I'm going to have to have you watch that movie. I'll find where it's playing streaming. Oh, yeah. It's not a Christmas movie, but go watch that movie. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my new favorite Christmas movie. Everybody go watch it right now. The perfect my couple. Cousin Honestly, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, just, just if you watch the two Home Alone movies and you just sandwich in My Cousin Vinny. And that way it's like, no, no, no. Now we know mm -hmm. that Joe Pesci is an expert of the law. And now we understand how yes. Yes, a different yes, Joe yes. Pesci is then able to get out. <laughs> love it. Love it. Definitely go do that. <laughs> right now. Hurry, right now, hurry, run. Right now. Like this video, comment down below, and then go do that. <laughs> That's right. And smash that like button. Smash that like button like you are Marv's foot smashing into a nail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, John. I'm so that's John. This is the 10th day of 25 Days of Christmas. Make sure to be here tomorrow for day 11. See ya.